Hello, um, today we are going to review the top important topics in terms of cusp overlap technique, which is a novel technique um, to potentially reduce new onset conduction disturbance. Uh, my name is Yohei Ono, interventional cardiologist at Toka University Hospital. And today we will have some nice conversation together with uh, my co-partner, uh, Yusuke Watanabe. Yusuke, please. Hello, my name is Yusuke Watanabe. Uh, I'm also an interventional cardiologist from uh, Tokyo University, Japan. What is the highlight of the cusp overlap technique? So to rephrase in one word is to isolate the non-coronary cusp. And the biggest advantage of this uh, technique is that it can elongate the le left ventricle outflow tract so we can accurately implant the depth. And it reduces or removes parallax in the marker band in this uh, cusp overlap view. And it also can assist with depth visualization near the non and right commissure and membrane septum during deployment. And this cusp overlap, as I mentioned, basically there's no need to remove the parallax in most of the cases. And it nicely elongates the left ventricle outflow tract, thereby we will, we will be able to implant the valve in a accurate depth. And we can trust the cusp overlap view at the NCC side, and then we go to the LAO view in order to confirm the depth of the LCC side. How often can you use cusp overlapping view in your daily clinical practice? I would say most of the cases, let's say 80 to 90% of the cases. In some situation, let's say horizontal aortic case, it's quite difficult to make this uh, cusp overlap technique. Uh, and in some bicuspid cases, it's quite difficult. So we need to choose the case carefully. Our next topic, we would like to um, touch a little bit about the optimized pro study, which is mainly uh, performed in the United States and Canada and some sites in Europe. This study basically um, uses this cusp overlap technique and try to investigate the incidence of conduction disturbance and its clinical outcome. The primary endpoint is rate of all cause mortality and all stroke at 30 days. And basically the patients are followed up at least one year. There's only preliminary data, the initial data here. Um, there's row in group, as well as the main cohort in this uh, preliminary data. All cause mortality is 0%. And the, the highlight of this study, obviously, is the pacemaker implantation rate, which is for the row in group, 7%, main cohort, 10%. And the combined data shows 8.8%. .8%. So this slide shows our initial data from the Ocean Tavi Registry. Uh, Ocean Tavi Registry is uh, um, pro prospectively collected data. Um, from the uh, Japanese cohort. And um, this study is kind of sub-study using the cusp overlap technique, including six high volume centers in Japan, Kokura Memorial Hospital, Tokyo University Hospital, where uh, Dr. Watanabe is, Saisei Kumamoto Hospital, Toyama University Hospital, Saisei Kusunomiya Hospital, and our center, Toka University Hospital. And surprisingly or not, this from our initial study, the pacemaker implantation rate was 4.8%, nine pacemaker implantation out of 184 patients. This is still initial data and the details are, we're uh, preparing the manuscript. So please look forward to our uh, publication. Okay, it's a very surprising data. So 4.8% of the pacemaker implantation rate is very low. So how this technique influence your daily practice in terms of the pacemaker implantation rate? The pacemaker rate has a lot of factors. Um, not only this technique, the patient selection, the valve size selection, 
and the post-procedure management, it all influences the rate of pacemaker rate. But I would say the most impact for the reducing the pacemaker rate is obviously the, the uh, accurate implantation of this uh, Evolute platform. And uh, our center has uh, meticulously um, tried to uh, implant this valve accurately uh, by using this cusp overlap technique as well as uh, intraprostitial imaging. Our center uses the intracardiac echo. So by combining these techniques, we actually, our center has uh, dramatically reduced pacemaker rate to almost 1.8%. We initially Whoa. had a pacemaker rate of five to 6%. That was already, I would say, acceptable. But by uh, introducing this new technique, together with um, our uh, intraprocedural imaging, uh, which visualized the membrane septums, I guess this combined technique further has potential to reduce the pacemaker rate. So do you usually measure membrane septum lengths for all the patients before TAVI? Or you sometimes measure during the procedure? That's a Which very important question. Thank you, Yusuke. Um, basically, as you may know, um, we can now measure the uh, membrane septum length uh, by high quality CT scan image. So we all measure the baseline, I mean, the pre-procedural uh, membrane septum. And um, by using the intracardiac echo, we can visualize the length of membrane septum. So we uh, measure the baseline and uh, measure the length of the membrane septum after the valve implantation, where the valve frame has attached inside or outside of the membrane septum that obviously uh, has impact on conduction disturbance. It makes sometimes uh, coronary occlusion. May, it may happen. So do you have some experience for difficulty to access of the coronary, coronary artery or some coronary occlusion? Fortunately, uh, due to our meticulous sizing and case planning, we have not um, experienced coronary obstruction using Evolute uh, valve, because in that kind of small sinus of valve, small ST junction cases, we tend to downsize the valve or even um, trying to implant the valve a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually one important uh, technique or strategy to avoid coronary obstruction. We've ex experienced several cases of um, coronary intervention um, mm -hmm. after uh, uh, evolute implantation. And in some cases, we had a little bit of difficulty um, accessing the coronaries, but we basically overcome those kind of cases using guided extension catheter and using the wire that uh, facilitates uh, the coronary access. Okay, so our next and final topic is uh, commissure alignment. This uh, concept facilitates easier coronary access after evolute implantation. So how we can achieve commissure alignment? Since the C mark paddle uh, locates 90 degrees away, I mean, uh, clockwise from the hat marker. Uh, this slide shows the uh, uh, location of the hat marker and the C tab paddle. So uh, when we insert the delivery catheter inside the patient's body, uh, in order to uh, achieve commissure alignment in most of the cases, I would say, um, to direct the flush board in three o'clock away from the operator. During the procedure, I always pay careful attention to the position of the hat marker. So this slide shows when we go up the uh, descending artery, as you can see in this slide, the hat marker is in the right side of the screen, which is in the, towards the greater curvature. And in the ascending artery, when we implant the valve, it's always on the left side. It also means at the greater curvature. And when we apply this cusp overlap technique, it's in the front. 
So we can see uh, the head marker as shown here. And for the final deployment, uh, usually this uh, C mark is in the inner curve and in the front. So we can appreciate as a C mark here. So this is the post Tavi CT after cusp overlap technique and commissure alignment. As you can see here in this slide, this is the paddle and this C paddle locates here in the two o'clock direction. So that means there's a commissure post in the two o'clock direction. So we can have appreciate three commissure posts as shown here. So in this kind of case, the, the left main is, um, is in the four o'clock direction. It's right in between the two commissure posts and also the right corner artery is in the 12 o'clock direction. It both facilitates easy coronary access. So whenever commissure tab is more or less in the two o'clock direction, um, RCA at two, 12 o'clock, LCA at, at five o'clock uh, enables easy coronary access. Thank you okay, for your nice presentation. So when you find any time during the procedure, the commission alignment is not correct position. So where, where, where to, do you want to uh, move the uh, THV and change the correct uh, to aim uh, correct uh, to achieve correct commercial alignment? Mm. So descending aorta or you are still doing uh, uh, turning the THV in the ascending aorta mm -hmm. or you are- Yeah, that's a very important yeah. question. Yeah. We, would we would like to avoid the incidence of stroke by going back and forth the aortic arch. So I always check this hot marker at the descending uh, aorta uh, position. So how often can you achieve maybe 90% or 100% for correct, correct commercial alignment? That's great. That's a great mm -hmm. question. We always take post tabi CT, whether it's with contrast mm -hmm. or not, uh, we can, see the position of the commissure post, even with uh, CT scan without contrast. Um, but this, as you know, depends where the coronary artery is. So in yeah. some cases, patient has a coronary artery, let's say left main artery coming towards the six o'clock position. In that mm -hmm. kind of case, the commissure post could overlap uh, to the uh, left coronary ostium. So I would say we can achieve commissure alignment in 80% of the case. Um, but in some cases, due to the position of the coronary artery or the valve has some kind of rotation and the commissure post has changed its location. In these two reasons, we can achieve, I would say mainly 80% of the cases. Okay, so we should check uh, the position of the coronary artery uh, before uh, TABA using the CT scan. That's right. We go back to the cusp overlapping view. So, so combination of the cusp, cusp overlapping technique and uh, correct, correct uh, commercial alignment. So we can avoid some difficulty to the coronary access uh, using uh, a cusp overlapping view. That's correct, yes. I would say these two techniques facilitate safer um, evolute implantation when we use to the lower risk patients. Very important topics to avoid conduction disturbance and makes coronary access easy. So thank you very much. Um, I think um, you've learned something about uh, cusp overlap technique and commissure alignment. And I hope these techniques uh, will be very useful uh, from uh, your daily practice. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much for joining our session. So this is a very nice uh, topic for treating a younger and lower risk patient uh, with using Evolute. And we can use these techniques uh, 
just after tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.